Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my car channel, Jay's Two Cars, which should just be like Jay's Four Cars now, because we got a new project car for the channel. Now you might be like, but Jay, what do you mean you got a new project car? I've talked to you guys about the 1LE, the ZL1 1LE. It's a hell of a car, but there's not a lot to do to it. We've already done all the stuff to it. I've got my, 15, my Ram 1500 Rebel that's got a six inch lift BDS kit on there, 37s, it's kind of done. The 370Z, I'm actually gonna be phasing that car out and giving it, selling it, whatever, to someone that can actually enjoy it. I'm a little too tall, a little too big for the car, and it's just not safe or comfortable for me to track. But I have always, since before my father passed away, wanted a classic car. We promised we were gonna do one together. It never happened. So we're gonna fast forward almost three years since his passing and a lot of saving and a lot of shopping to our new project car. Say hello to my 1967 Camaro, we don't know. I don't think it's a real SS, but it's badged as one. You know, it's kind of funny, 1967 Camaro was not my first choice. 1969 Camaro, on the other hand, highly desirable. The problem is, is with how desirable it is, its price is also quite a bit more than a 67 or a 68. I also would have preferred a 68 over a 67, but there's a few reasons why I got this particular car. One, the price was right. The guy wanted to unload it. It had a lot of work already done to it. The motor's not factory. Um, it's a crate motor. It's a built transmission. There's not numbers matching anything. In fact, the reason why I said in the beginning I don't even think it's in a real SS is because I can't even read the body plate under the hood that tells you what trim coat it is because this car has been painted and painted and painted again and again on top of each other rather than stripping paint off. It's so thick I can't even read the numbers. So I'm gonna try and acid dip that and strip it eventually to see if I can see what the actual body coat is. But I don't think it's a real SS. I think it might have actually been a six speed or a six cylinder, straight six is what they had when they weren't a super sport package. Uh, but that doesn't matter to me. It wasn't after a numbers matching car. There were plenty of those out there. I wanted a car that I can build up and have fun with. Now I said on Instagram, this was a project car. And a lot of you guys were like, oh my God, the car looks mint. It looks done. Yeah, it looks that way in photos. And it looks that way at the 10 foot rule. And you get closer than 10 feet at five feet and you squint real hard, it looks done. But when you start digging deeper in it, you'll see there's things that it needs. Like one of the first things that we're gonna do when we do any sort of work to this car and do obviously videos about it is the driver's side window doesn't go up all the way. It doesn't touch the seals at all. And the vent window doesn't open because it hits this trim right here. So to, something tells me that that car is completely out of alignment on that side. The rear window doesn't go down all the way. It stops right there and then I can help it down. But things like that need to be addressed. The car underneath at least is rust free. Um, no issues with rust there. It actually looked like it had undercoating. Remember, Dad, buy this bad boy right now and I'll throw in the other coating for free. Remember the, the old used car salesman pitch? So it looks like a lot of that is flaking off, but fortunately where it flakes off, there's no rust under there. So we've got a pretty rust-free car. Except for inside the doors, I'm assuming there's gonna be a lot of corrosion and rust because water makes its way in there. Kind of scared to see what's hiding under this paint as well. Interesting thing about this car though is the fact that it's got a ZZ6 5.7 liter 350 crate motor dropped in. So it's a 405 horsepower uh, crate motor. This particular motor though did have a cam swap in it and when it comes to like some of the other like the long tube headers and stuff on there they did a bench dyno and they provided me two binders of all the work done on this car uh, of a bench dyno of it making 426 horsepower and like 410 foot pounds of torque I think it was. So it gets up and it moves. The problem is like these older automatic transmissions, I'll explain why it's an automatic in a second, just are not efficient. There's so much powertrain loss, um, the torque converter and all that, the power just doesn't make it to the rear wheels in the same way that transmissions do today. So it doesn't feel like it has that much power. My 370Z, which makes 336 horsepower to the wheels, feels faster because of the fact that this car has the inefficiency of an automatic and the Z is a, is a six speed manual. Um, the reason why I went with an automatic, I didn't even really bother addressing too much of this in the comments on Instagram when I posted photos because people are gonna be very strongly opinionated regarding manual or, or automatic, and that's fine. Those opinions are totally personal. You guys are, are entitled to those. This is a cruising car. I've already put 300 miles on this car since I bought it two days ago. I have been driving it everywhere for various reasons. I want any problems that are gonna to happen to surface. I also wanna to get to know the car. 
when I was first driving the car, every single red flag in my brain was going up. What was that sound? What was that smell? What's that noise? What's this rattle? I don't know what any of the sounds and stuff are. So I don't know if the cars get ready to literally fall apart on me on the highway or what's totally normal. I can tell you right now that uh, Mike with Red Barn Racing, the same engine builder that built my ZL1, who has a 68 Camaro, half the time I get on the phone, I explain something, he's all, that's perfectly normal. That's totally normal. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, what about this? He's like, no, that's a problem. So <laughs> there's a couple of things. He's like, no, that's a problem. We got to handle that. For instance, it doesn't downshift when you floor it because the uh, TV cable on the transmission is totally out of alignment, totally out of whack, not adjusted properly. We also don't think we're getting a full throttle on the, on the uh, Holley carburetor. That's a carbureted car. So there's a lot of fun things that need to be handled with this car. The rear end, 12 volt, yes. It's a strong, powerful nine inch 12 volt that has 308 gears. That's gotta go, obviously. So we'll be doing like some 390s or something in there. It is positive traction, at least. It has subframe connectors, um, KYB shocks. It's got some Hotchkiss rear springs in there, all stock A-arms and stuff up front. But let's go ahead and start by taking a look under the hood. The only thing I hate about these old cars is you can, anyone can get, in, get into the hood. So here is the ZZ6 crate motor. It's got 20, 2,800 miles on it now. It has an air conditioning unit. It does have an actual AC Delco air conditioner because of the fact that this was a turnkey crate motor. So that means the serpentine system and everything you see, the pulley system came with the engine. It wasn't a long block. It came with the intake, the carburetor, the air cleaner, all the serpentine and everything. It has a vintage air unit to bring air conditioning inside the car. So it's got an air handler in there. It's got um, the, all the vents were added and such and the control unit. So it does have a functioning air conditioner. I live in Southern California. It gets hot. So there are times I, if it gets really hot with the leather seats, I don't want to stick to them. So we'll turn on the AC when we need to. Long tube headers on there. I have no idea what brand they are because this engine doesn't come with headers. They are ceramic coated, which is kind of nice. Keeps a lot of under hood temps down. But it's funny, the car did not want to turn over when we first got it. What I mean by that is like when it was cold and you go to crank it, it would go like a dead battery. But then as soon as it fires up, you turn it off, you turn it on again, it fires right back up. So we know we're getting full charge because it's 14.7 volts on the, on the gauge. And I took it to Red Barn Racing and the first thing he says is, you got no engine ground. So your starter is trying to pull all of its uh, ground through any little ground it can find, which is obviously not adding enough gauge or it's not enough gauge through all those little wires that, you know, obviously it's only gonna be the, wire, the, the wires going to the starter itself, meant that it had to take the longest path to get any sort of uh, current through it. So he added this uh, engine ground right here, this cable mounted right here to the intake, took three seconds, fires right up. Um, the radiator on this, I have no idea what brand it is. But I can tell you right now, he was like, that's a bigger radiator than I'm running in mine. It is a performance rod and custom PRC. That could just be the cap. I don't know. It's big, it's aluminum, and apparently it gets the job done because the, it hits thermostat temp and never moves, which is perfect. Thermostat temp's too high though. It's 195. We need to put like a 160 in this bad boy. It has a set trap oil cooler that's not hooked up to anything. Apparently they advertise it as, it has a set trap tranny cooler. It's got the core, but there's no lines going anywhere. There are a couple upgrades in here though. For instance, the brake system. This is not a power brake car originally, but it has the hydro boost system. Now in terms of the power steering, this is a Flaming River racing steering box. It's kind of a halfway mark between rack and pinion, which is very modern, much newer than this 53 year old technology in this car. And the old like, pinion box or whatever it was called, this, this steering box, right? That had all kinds of slop in it and had no power steering or any of that. So it's power assisted. It doesn't feel too ridiculous. It doesn't wander when you're driving. It's actually adjustable and uh, it doesn't take up room for the long tube headers. Some of the cars I looked at had rack and pinion in them already, but the rack and pinion unit took up the space where long tube headers would go. And because this car is exempt from California admissions, admissions, emissions, I can do whatever I want to this car. It has no catalytic converters on it because they were not required in 1967. Therefore, I do not have to have them in 2020. Anything older than 1976 is exempt from California emissions testing. I could go twin turbos on this bad boy and let them hang out the hood. California carb can't do anything about it. And that's one of the reasons why I love this car. It's like the big fat middle finger to carb from a car enthusiast. Now, I'm sure I pissed off a lot of people like, but the air, yeah, I know the air, I breathe it too. But in terms of plans, for the power plant. I feel like I can hear a lot of you already typing 426 horsepower and you need more? Really? 
but I'm building an LS7. Well, I'm not building it. Red Barn Racing is. We'll be documenting the build and helping put it in when it's ready. LS7 carbureted. And what I love about that, it's all the modern advancements of the Chevy small block because it's a 427 uh, cubic inch, seven liter small block. So it's lighter than this, but it's like all the modern technology is taking place in the block with the roller uh, assemblies and such. No, no distribution or distributor on there. It's gonna still be like a Holly EFI coil pack system, but with a carburetor on top. So it's gonna be like the best of both worlds. I wanna learn all about the old school ways. The way my dad always talked about having to pump the carb and this, or par pump the gas and get it started and accidentally flooding it and all this, which I've done already. I had this thing where I didn't want to start because I was pumping the gas too much. I didn't realize once it's already warm, you don't have to do that anymore because there's still unburnt fuel sitting inside there. <laughs> I know how to start it now. I'm thinking I'm getting pretty good at it. Never thought I'd have to learn how to start a car. <laughs> didn't realize how much the computers are doing it for me these days. <laughs> it's a built 700R4 from Art Car. Anyone that knows uh, racing and automatic transmissions will know, especially if you're in Southern California, you'll know Art Car. But we're going to be going with a completely different transmission setup. I'm not even going to talk about what it is because it's only going to start a uh, potential fanboy slash arguments in the chat. And we'll just wait till we get to that point so we can tell you why and hopefully justify with you why we're doing it when we get there. But the transmission has a uh, oil pan leak. Um, it's seepage and it's probably because this car has sat so much. I have two binders they provided me of every work that's been done on this car, where it was done, how much it was and all of that and the mileage and the date at which it was done. It has a Dakota digital dash in there. That was zeroed out, obviously a new, brand new dash. And the engine and the transmission, all that was installed and the, and the rear end rebuilt all at the same time when that dash was put in. So that's 2,800 miles on this engine and this transmission since 2015. So in five years, they've done 2,500 miles. You do the math on that, then you'll know that this car has sat a lot. And the worst thing you can do to a car and for the health and hydration of its seals is to have it sit. I bought it from a consignment place actually, from a classic car consigner. I don't wanna say how much I paid for it, but I got a really, really good price on this, which is why I, I took the chance on this car. Um, where it had been parked, totally dry underneath. Drove it all the way home from San Diego up here to the Inland Empire, parked it, no drips or anything underneath. Then drove the car to Long Beach and back, then I noticed drip, 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 drip. So it's one of those things where like, the longer it like heat cycled, it was a, quite a few heat cycles in there, the thinning of the, of the transmission fluid, it then started working its way out. It's a really small leak. And in fact, it's not even leaking today because I already cleaned it all up. But one of the things that really made me love this car is just how complete and done the interior is. They, uh, they have receipts for all the new upholstery, the new foam, front and rear, new door cards. The, uh, I don't know if the center console has been replaced, but as you can see, everything in this car even the dash pad, all replaced. One of the things I used to do was custom car stereos and stuff. And I used to build DB drag systems. We would do custom classic cars all the time where they were like, build me a new center console with armrests and all that sort of stuff. And I used to build that stuff. And I think I'm gonna go that route eventually. But that's so far down the list because of how good this interior is, I don't feel any need to do that. But one thing I'm happy about is because it doesn't have the gauge package down here, which is typical for like the RS and, and, and whatnot, I think I might, bring this dash down like this, and then I can have a, a modern flip out or something, or a touch screen, like a doubled in touch screen or something in there, and work this. See, this is like broken. It still works, but it, it flops around, and when you turn the wheel, it doesn't unclick when you turn use the turn signal. That's probably one of the things I'll, you'll find a video on in this car really quickly. But one of the things that needs to be addressed in this car though, actually, is although it looks great in here like this, and I'm keeping a toolbox with me at all times moving forward. Are you ready for this? It's surface rust, but rust nonetheless, that needs to be handled. What happened is the seals in this car are no good. The seals in this car leak everywhere. All the seals need to be replaced. Moisture got in here and they left it. So it sat between this, ha this houndstooth cover and the floor pan, and it's all surface rust. So I can just wire wheel that off, do some uh, rust um, prohibitor, and then re-speckle coat it, because you can buy spray cans with a speckle coat. There's more rust there than anywhere else in the car combined. Fortunately, it's just surface rust. When you look at the inside of the fenders on this car, you can tell there's some areas where there's Bondo. And over here on the inside, you can see these dimples and those are welds. I went in there and I scratched it with a key before I bought the car. And I'm like, are those welds? I'm like, if you're gonna replace a quarter, you cut the whole damn thing out and you replace it in one unit. It dawned on me. This car has been hit and had a dent. So what you're seeing are the welds for when you weld the nail to it 
to do dent pulling. I used to do auto body and it dawned on me later after the fact, oh, that's what that is. Normally you don't see it on the inside because you can't see the other side of the metal, but it does burn through. So that's what I was seeing. We know there's gonna be Bondo here. You can hear it. You hear the tone change? Hollow, denser. That's scary. There's gonna be all kinds of Bondo probably up in here. What I mean by the 10 foot rule and the five feet if you squint is if you look down in the seals right here, you can see where they didn't prep the car right. The paint's all kind of lifting there. You can see the outline. This car used to have rally stripes on it because they didn't sand it down all the way and they just painted over it. So you can see the outline of the rally stripes. I'm probably gonna go with a silver color, I think, and then black trim everywhere, not chrome. I don't want any chrome on this car. The paint, there's fish eyes everywhere. You could tell where some of the Bondo had shrunk over time. Like they probably spray painted it right after they did the Bondo work and you're supposed to get Bondo time to shrink. As it dries, it shrinks and then you have to fill it again. So it looks like that, that happened and it pulled some paint in with it. It's like a glorified Earl Scheid paint job and that's not factory. We are gonna, when we do the auto body on this, we are gonna take it down to metal. There's been three different colors of this car. It's originally a red car. The floor pans are red. The inside of the firewall, if you scratch it, is red. We have found butternut yellow in this car. On the inside of the door frame, it's butternut yellow. And clearly it's black now. And who knows what's happened in between those other colors. There is such a buildup of paint on this car. I bet you we, sh we save 20 pounds when we get it all off. <laughs> hey baby, you working? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> The engine stuff's gonna be done soon. I've already told Mike, find me an engine. Let's build it, let's do it now. I want that now. Stance wise, I haven't decided if I'm gonna go with the old school muscle car, 15 inch wheels, fat tires and drag radials and skinnies up front, or more of a modern pro touring with a little bit bigger wheel, a little bit lower so side pro or sidewall. But yeah, I'm excited to see where this is gonna go. And I'm, I'm kind of curious as to what you guys would do if this were your 67. But what I think we need to end with is gonna be a sound clip. Because one of the things I did this morning is I had Flowmaster 40 series welded in and it got rid of the ch cheap generic mufflers that were in it that make no noise. And these do have long tubes and no catalytic converters. So we might as well at least hear it and see if Jay can actually start the carburetor car properly. Yeah, baby. It's got an electric choke. Let's see if I can get the choke to turn off. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> Smells like 1967. All right, guys. We got a lot of work to do on this, and you're gonna see it on this channel. Subscribe if you're not already. Tell your car friends. They can come yell at me and tell me I'm doing it wrong. <laughs>